hello sorry if the lighting is just absolutely awful it gets dark at 4 p.m so there's not much i can do about it i'm going to be talking on coming off of search lane because it's it's not something people talk about gubbing on it right but no one talks about the withdrawal of coming off of it if you've never been on Sertraline. It's an antidepressant. It's an SSRI, so selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Basically, it like levels out the chemicals in your brain and people with depression take antidepressants and you can take it with other conditions, but I've only taken it for depression. So basically, I went on floxetine last year. It was November, October, November 2022. I was 16 when I first went on it and then I think I turned 17 whilst on it, I'm not sure. I was only on it for five weeks, four to five weeks, because it made me have, what's it called, fleeting thoughts as I call them. Obviously, I wanted to end things. I wanted to end things before I went on it and I went on it and it made me go right downhill. I came off of it. I don't remember having any withdrawals from that. I mean, I just kind of carried on being as depressed as I was before I went on them. I went to a CAMS appointment. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was April time. If I'm correct, I've been on search lane from April until now, this month. Um, and this month is the month that I'm gonna be cutting off. Going on search lane, I can say that it's numbed me. It's definitely cleared me. It's like, it's given me a brain reset. I do have another video on antidepressants, but this is gonna be a more in depth one and a more it's more in depth on coming off of them as well. Became numb, became very, I still am. <laughs> I still am fairly numb at times. And it's made me very like straightforward to the point, blunt, all of that. But I am quite a blunt person. Um, I just like to be honest. Sometimes I might be too honest, but I like to be honest. So with Floxetine, I was only on 10, then I think I went up to 20 and back to 10 because it was definitely very like strong and it was making me feel very sick. With Sertraline, I haven't really had any like physical symptoms. I mean, nothing that's been like really caught my attention. Floxetine and Sertraline are like the generic ones that people get put on at a younger age. But I started off 25 Sertraline, then I went up to 50, then I went up to 100 and they did not want to up it again. I was not, I didn't know what to do, but they would not up it again because they thought if I go up it again, I won't be able to regulate. They feel like I'll have highs and lows, almost like bipolar episodes. They thought I would either go too high or too low at times. Whereas obviously I was just feeling really down and low all the time, but I was numbed. So they said they worried that if I went up again, on the sertraline that my mood would go like from being slightly down to like obviously having really highs and really lows somehow we decided to start coming off of it and so i've gone from 100 down to 25 i've spent the last month or two weaning myself off i was very numb and just kind of like acted as if i didn't care obviously i had empathy after i started coming off of it I had all my emotions like flood back and it's definitely hit me. It's hit me a lot. And if you didn't know, there are withdrawals um, to coming off of sertraline, as, well, any antidepressant, but if you come off of them in the wrong way, it can make you a lot worse and have a lot worse symptoms than I did, especially physical symptoms. I know that if you cold turkey a antidepressant and you don't gradually come off of it there can be some extreme side effects like i'm pretty sure hallucinations vomiting diarrhea everything the withdrawal i've had is obviously my just flood and it's like come and goes i'm very confused i'm very out of it i'm very i'm like crying randomly like i just felt very 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 frustrated like an hour ago and was crying but like it's so hard to get any like tears out it's really really a struggle because i'm like i've got so much emotion and i feel like none of it's coming out it's all trapped in here it's making me very frustrated and i am experiencing a brand brand new emotion anger now i have never really felt in my life i've never gone felt like as if 
I'm angry. I've had frustration. I've had irritation, obviously, like everyone does. But I've never been like, I'm fucking angry. Obviously, you say you're angry in the moment, but I feel like I've never actually felt it. Whereas I feel like now I've come off search lean, I can go, I can feel angry. I can feel so frustrated that I want to lose it and get angry. And that's definitely a new, <laughs> that's a new emotion for me. And it's, it's really weird navigating that because of, if you haven't seen like my PTSD videos, I have been through something when I was younger and it is, it, I'm just confused. <laughs> I'm so confused, so overwhelmed, so much is going on at once. And it is just, you don't know where to go. I don't know how to navigate myself. Where I've been through something when I was younger and that just really micromanages my mental health. It's really like weird. I don't know <laughs> what I should be doing. And I'm in a state of self-sabotage at the moment. And that's the thing I think I'm struggling with the most at the moment. Not wanting to eat. Um, keeping myself up at night. Um, just wanting to do things that force me to do something I don't want to do. If that makes sense. And it's not healthy. It's really not. And I know it's not. But I still continue to want to self-sabotage. And I still continue to let myself do that. It's like, I want to self-sabotage by not eating. But then I feel like I'm still sabotaging myself by eating. Because obviously then I'm making myself feel shit for eating. So it's it's everywhere. It's literally everywhere. I'm like, I want to just... It's quite bad. <laughs> Let's just say that. That's quite bad. But obviously it's something that I'm navigating and working through. And it's just... I like to give myself time for things. I don't know how to do with it. So the only thing I can really do is just sit here and do nothing. <laughs> I don't know what's going on and it's very confusing. So if you are or planning to come off any antidepressants, just know that it might be confusing. You are gonna be okay, you're gonna be fine. It's just figuring out how to deal with your emotions. Obviously, as I've had not had them for so many months and obviously coming off sertraline, it's like they all come back <laughs> and when they all came back when i went down to just 75 i had a day where i was just crying 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 at so many things and obviously you feel weak you feel vulnerable but obviously that's a sign of strength it's not really a sign of weakness so you just need to kind of believe that you are getting through it and you are strong because it's really hard and I'm glad that I've got my little comfort teacher at school. I've got people that I can talk to if I need to at school. And obviously I've got the comfort of my own home. And I've got these two cats that are right near me. But don't be scared to go on them. Like you can try them and you can come back off them. If you've got to the point where you think that therapy is not helping, please go and seek out something else because you can try so many different therapies. And I've tried so many people and it's like it is a struggle and if you want to resort to medication because you feel like i just need a break from my mo my own emotions please 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 go to the gp and just see what you can do even if you're like 14 15 get in touch with cams and know they're not the best and know they are problematic sometimes and i know they're not always the most useful but please do something because it's better to be on a waiting list than to be nowhere and be like well, I've got nothing planned, no one's helping me. When you're so young and you're dealing with so many things that you should not be dealing with at an age like this, it is very, very difficult. And I've been through things. I don't know if I'll ever blur out the whole story, but I've been through something no child should go through. And I mean, that's why I've got this tattoo. It's the 444 tattoo, have you seen it? It means protection and there is nothing I want more in this world than to be a mum, protect children and just be in a job that protects people. I, yeah, I, if you've ever been through an experience where you weren't protected when you should have been, or you've just been in a situation where no child should have been through it, believe me, you are not alone and it is very very difficult to navigate through something when you don't fully understand it or you didn't fully understand it when you went through it and there is no answers sometimes and i'm really struggling with that as well like i always want an answer and i go to like my comfort teacher therapist <laughs> i don't really know what to call her but she is it's so impressive how she understands me but it's like she always tells me you don't need to know the answers what if you never know the answers and that scares me not knowing things really really terrifies me but you've just got to like just sit here and absorb everything 
Take everything at your own pace. Do not force yourself to do things that you don't feel like you're ready for. If you don't feel like you're ready for something very, very, very minor, you don't need to pressure yourself to do it. Yes, there'll be days where you might be like, okay, I could push myself. But if you feel like you're only pushing yourself to make you feel worse, do not do it. So many people struggle with mental health and so many people that wake up in the morning, can't get out of bed. They can't brush their teeth. They feel dirty. They don't brush their teeth, but they can still feel dirty. It's completely valid to not do something and then feel the guilt and feel the like aftermath of it and still be valid. Like that's okay. <laughs> Like if you don't get out of bed and then you feel lazy, it's okay to feel lazy because you've got an excuse. You've got, obviously, when you are depressed, that is literal chemicals in your brain not being as they should be. Or you've, had, or you've been through something that's obviously altered your brain chemistry. My Instagram is always, always open. It's public. It's open for everyone. So if you ever need any support, please message me because I don't want anyone being alone. And I... Like at school, I'm on my own. I don't have people that I go to at broken lunch. I go home at broken lunch. So if you ever need any support, please message me. I will leave my Instagram below. And if you've gotten this far, I love you. <laughs> Honestly, if anyone's watched this long, then you're a gem. I obviously, yeah, I'm about to be completely off of them. But I thought I would go more in depth on coming off of them because it is a journey. <laughs> Even on my birthday, I didn't feel 100%. If you don't feel your best when people expect you to, that's also okay. You could be sad on a day where it's meant to be all about you and you're meant to be happy. You can be sad, that's okay. But yeah, thank you all for supporting and thank you for watching.